and welcome to our online crib service here at St Paul's. Normally, we'd be welcoming you into the building, getting ready to sing carols at the top of our voices with the anticipation and excitement of Christmas Day just around the corner. This year, the pandemic means that we cannot gather together in person safely, but we will not allow COVID-19 to stop us celebrating the most exciting event in the whole history of humankind. So we've put together a short service with Bible readings, the Christmas story retold around Shadwell, and carols for you to sing your hearts out to. So why not grab a cuppa, or maybe something stronger like a glass of mulled wine, settle down on your sofa, and let's enjoy celebrating Christmas together. So I'm stood underneath the enormous cedar tree outside a church. Have you ever seen that programme, uh, Who Do You Think You Are, where celebrities research their family tree, looking back over the generations to see where they come from and who they, who they belong to? Jesus doesn't come from out of nowhere. He comes from a royal family tree of the people of God. God promised in the Bible he would send someone to rescue his people who were in trouble. And he promised that this person would be someone from the family tree of his people. Starting at Abraham in the Old Testament, all the way through to Jesse, father of King David, all the way through to a humble couple named Mary and Joseph. And here is where our story begins. Joyful and triumphant 
with God and the word was God he was with God in the beginning through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind this light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it there was a man sent from God whose name was John he came as a witness to, to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He, only, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Mary was due to be married to Joseph, but one day an angel appeared to her to tell her some news. The angel told her that she was going to have a baby. Could you imagine something like this coming out of the blue and telling you that you were going to have a baby? I'd have been slightly terrified. I don't know about you. Anyway, the angel said, don't be afraid, don't be worried, I've got great news for you. You're going to have a baby, and this baby will be the Son of God. He will save God's people, and you will name him Jesus. So when the time came for Mary to have her baby, the Roman Emperor, Caesar Augustus, decided he wanted to count the people in his land and do a census. Joseph, her husband, came from Bethlehem, so they had to travel all the way to Bethlehem to be counted. They didn't have cars or planes to get there. It was a long, long journey and they had to walk by foot or on a donkey. They would have been absolutely exhausted, especially Mary. So imagine when they get to Bethlehem and they see the city in the distance and the lights of all the inns and they think, wow, brilliant. There's gonna be a place for us to stay. A warm, cozy room, somewhere with a good pint and something tasty to eat. But when they get to the inn, they knock on the door. Just sanitise my hands first. They knock on the door and the innkeeper opens. Hello, have you got any room? No, sorry. We do do takeaways. Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel, sent, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. 
But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. So because there was no room at the inn, Mary and Joseph found themselves staying in the place where the animals were kept, a stable. At least it was warm and at least they had shelter, although it might have been a bit smelly. Could you imagine giving birth in front of an audience of animals? That night, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and she laid him in a manger and she named him Jesus. brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth
Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. So on a field outside of Bethlehem that night, there were some shepherds looking after their sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared before them and said, don't be frightened, I've got great news. God has promised a saviour and tonight he has been born in Bethlehem. The shepherds were amazed. And then an entire choir of angels appeared in the sky, singing praises to God. When the angels left them, the shepherds knew what they had to do. They grabbed their stuff and they rushed down the mountainside into Bethlehem to find Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus lying in a manger.
22 2 verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw him, his star, when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Beth, but you Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, I by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact same, the, exact, the exact same. The star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I can I may to may go and worship him. After they had heard king the king, they went uh, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star they, with his mother Mary, and they, they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been born in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their camp country by another route. A long, long way away from Bethlehem, there were some magi. And now they were really wise, clever people. And they'd been studying long and hard, just like the children in this school. They studied the skies, the stars and the planets. And they knew that a brand new star appearing in the sky was really important. It was a sign that the Saviour God had promised was coming into the world. So when they saw this massive star appear on the horizon, they gathered their things together and they set off to find the newborn king. So the wise men travelled many, many miles and they came to Bethlehem and the star rested above where the stable was and they found the baby Jesus with his mother and his father. They gave the gifts and they bowed down and they worshipped him because here was the one that God had sent to save his people. How are you feeling this Christmas? It's not been an easy year for any of us. It's been a year of stockpiling loo roll, of cancelled holidays, of the horror of homeschooling and being stuck at home for weeks on end. But it's also been a year of anxiety, of fear, of suffering and of death for too many people. Normally at this time of year, we'd be enjoying parties, we'd be visiting friends and family, and we'd be welcoming you here to a packed church to sing carols and to worship the newborn king, but not this year. So is 2020 the year when Christmas was canceled? Well, not at all. Christmas is not canceled. Yes, our parties and our gatherings may be canceled, our celebrations might be muted and smaller, 
But this is the year when the message of Christmas must shine even brighter. A message of, of hope, of comfort and of joy. That first Christmas, as we've just been reminded, was far from ideal. A, a couple being forced to travel for a census, no room for a pregnant woman, a baby being laid in a manger, strange visitors in the middle of the night and a murderous king. Yet that first Christmas became the catalyst for something special. The Son of God was born amongst us to rescue us from sin, from death and from evil. For the child in the manger would grow up, he would die on the cross, he would rise from the dead and he would bring eternal life to all who put their trust in him. Amid the seemingly unending bad news of 2020, let this be the year when we embrace love and embrace hope in the midst of darkness and suffering. Let this be the year when we open our hearts and our lives to the one who was born to rescue you, me, and the entire world. Amid all that you, all that you and your loved ones have endured this year, know that love came down at Christmas. Love was laid in a manger. Love was crucified on a cross. Love was raised from the dead. Love's name is Jesus, and he did all of this for you. The Bible tells us that God is love and that whoever lives in love lives in God. God's response to human suffering is love, the love that is revealed in Jesus. I pray that for each of us, our response to COVID-19 is also one of love. May that love be shown through us this Christmas and beyond in our care for our loved ones, our care for those who we work with, our care for those who are our neighbours, our care for the poor and the stranger. For love is stronger than pain, stronger than suffering, and stronger even than death. But above all, this Christmas, may you receive Christ's love into your heart. May you know the depths of his love for you, and may you know the comfort and the joy that can only be found in the Christ child. From all of us here at St Paul's, I wish you a peaceful Christmas and a hope-filled New Year. A chap called Joe and a girl called Mary, isolated together as the world was getting scary. Staying at home was the law of the lands and everyone was frantically washing their hands. Herod and friends addressed the whole nation, but they didn't understand their own information. Mary and Joseph watched the daily broadcast. This was the new normal, how long would it last? During the lockdown, an angel appeared. Peace be with you, it said, but Mary feared. You can't be here, you're not in my bubble. If people find out, then we'll all be in trouble. Don't worry, said the angel, God's got you up the duff. My goodness, said Mary, I've heard quite enough. She ran to tell Joseph at home on furlough. He didn't understand or want people to know. Mary was keen to share the news she was wielding. She went to see Elizabeth, but Elizabeth was shielding. They all arrived home before wave number two. Did you know Jesus saves and he's here to save you? This year has been strange with the distancing rules and working from home and the kids not in schools. So as you stay by yourself without socialization, fear not one day soon, there'll be mass celebration. Christmas 2020 will have masks, tests and soap, but please don't forget, Jesus brings peace, love and hope. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive a King. Let every heart prepare Him. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And ever. Joy 
to the earth the Savior reigns your sweetest songs employ while fields and floods rocks hills and plains repeat the sound and joy repeat the sound and joy service draws to a close we wish you a very happy Christmas and we end with receiving God's blessing today so may the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds the perseverance of the wise men the obedience of Mary and Joseph and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always Amen.